I want to make like the tickets. And the leaflet has a ticket so you can get into our enclosure. We're going to make it with a tiny bit of tissue paper. I'm going to make a map so people know where they're going because if there's a crowd they will get very scared. My name's Helen O'Brien and I am one of the creative learning officers for Culture Perth and Kinross um, and I manage the creative learning network for Perth and Kinross. I'm Paul Gorman, I'm the creative director of the company Hidden Giants um, and we have been working in Perth and Kinross um, for three years now on a variety of creative learning projects in collaboration with schools throughout the local authority. We have established a variety of opportunities for schools, teachers and pupils to engage in conversations, workshops, CPD sessions and projects that all look at the role and place and function of creativity within the curriculum. We've been continuing and developing our creative learning programme to develop uh, approaches to delivering and engaging young people in, in their learning. This takes a form of uh, CPD twilight sessions, immersive theatre and learning projects. We were interested in the idea of what happens when you remove the adult teacher voice from a learning experience. One of the things that we are keen to apply is the idea that we don't know the answers. Is encouraging schools and teachers to find different ways of looking at the known or the fixed, to discover the things that might make us curious or pupils curious. That could involve paying attention to a specific area of the maths curriculum that has become stale or looking at the playground and how children are interacting or looking at how interdisciplinary learning is delivered through the whole school. So rather than coming in with a, a creativity resource pack, we established a dialogue with the, the teachers in the school that allow us to understand where they're at, what their needs are, what their challenges are. And we then respond by paying attention to and situating learning on their terms. Much of that is about disrupting and interrupting uh, what's already happening. And through that process, we find newness, excitement, curiosity, innovation within the curriculum, within classrooms. So working in partnership with schools, we're developing a, an understanding and a common language of what creativity is and how it helps support learning and teaching within schools and within a curriculum and how it enables teachers to allow their children and young people to have confidence and engage, encourage, empower them to, to own their own learning. Those skills then enable the young people to be those confident, resilient individuals who can cope with whatever's chucked at them, developing those employability skills, developing those transferable skills, and also developing sense of self as well. One of the projects uh, that we have worked on in Perth and Kinross is with Dunning Primary School, which uh, initially started with a collaboration with one of the classroom teachers there that looked at creative approaches to delivering the French curriculum. And from that partnership, we were invited back into the school to carry out a residency project. Hidden Giants worked for one day a week throughout the school term. Didn't have any predetermined agendas or outputs or outcomes. It was about the role of the creative practitioner working with a primary school and what would happen when those two parties came together. We worked in partnership with the staff team to look at what learning looks like and what learning could look like. The teachers all spoke about the frustration about the pupils not being able to articulate or express what it is they had learned or were learning and how that impacted on future learning. So we looked at grammar lessons, um, we looked at a, a team building um, project and we also created an experiment which asked the teachers to work with, with an unknown object that was placed in a box. This process of working within the unknown 
was something then that we carried on to a final um, project that was a culmination of the residency and, and we called it Habitat, where we wanted to turn this school into a zoo. This was about asking the teachers to have faith and give trust to the pupils, that they started to ask questions about their role of teacher. Was it the instructor or was it the facilitator? What was their classrooms like? Who decided what would happen next? What areas of the curriculum could the children take it into if they were left to their own device? It established a much more open space for the children to learn and, and collaborate and engage in the process of making their school into a zoo. And what we saw was children being playful with the idea of creating a habitat for their imagined animal. Paul and his friends came in with five boxes. They had strips in them, like what its lifestyle is and what it eats. First of all, we had to plan what we were um, going to, like what we were choosing our animal to be. Um, it couldn't just be any ordinary animal, it had to be one that was made up. So we were basically making our enclosure and putting all its needs into the enclosure. We really wanted to see if the children could apply what they'd been learning over the year about working independently, being creative, roles within groups, been able to identify their own learning um, and therefore identify their own next steps. So it's very individual to the child. And just hearing the buzz around the school has been great. Lots of quotes from children, this is the best day ever, can we stay in at playtime? I don't think I've ever heard that one before. But also from the staff about the pride that they've taken in the children and what they're actually producing. The creative aspect was not the, the making or the transforming of classrooms into the enclosures or making the animals. It was the disruption that came from asking them to think about what that animal needs or the disruption that came from uh, the zoo warden telling them that they hadn't considered how big their enclosure was or what emotional needs their animal had. The, the creativity came through their, the discipline of sticking with this, of, of, of communicating and collaborating with others. There was these um, inspectors that came round and um, they put the tape around it because it wasn't like safe enough for um, other people to come visit it. We've like put a lot more effort into it, working really well as a team. Changed what was wrong and it got the tape taken off. Without the confines of a textbook or a learning intention, they travelled through the curriculum in a really holistic, natural, play-like state. It's been really fun. We've been able to show our creative and imaginative side of just our personality. It was a constant state of asking questions about whether this was right. There was no success criteria that was established. It was them dictating and deciding what was right for them at that moment. They were in charge of their own learning, they were deciding what was happening next. And that to me was again forged in the year-long residency that when I worked with the classes and when the, the teacher worked with the classes, we celebrated the, the unknownness, the refining, the, the creative process that naturally happens when we uh, engage in a, a, a inquiry-based model of education. Even though we're grown up, I think we've still got that that little bit of like child still left in us. Um, we can be goofy, but yeah, but that's just because like we're enjoying ourselves. And even though it may look like we're messing around, we're actually like that's how we work. Cause like we're being creative and imaginative and throwing our ideas out there and just being imaginative really and that's how we roll. <laughs> One of the main reasons why our projects in Perth and Kinross have been successful is because of the invitation that we have received from the, the staff teams that we have worked with and openness and transparency to what it is we're all trying to do and in particular what we saw in Dunning was a, a staff team that really embraced the new ideas that we were bringing to the table. I was in the staff room and classrooms with them. I understood the complexities of their job and potentially we can only do that through strong relationships. Through a series of these projects, we've started to establish and embed a cohort of teachers and schools within the local authority. Here are a body of practitioners out there ready to kind of 
share this and and uh, disseminate it. Something that Perth and Kinross has done really well is not have standalone one-off projects, but develop a a strong network of schools within different clusters that are now talking to each other, sharing terminology, sharing vision, and through that informal network, I think what we're beginning to see is small moments that are beginning to create a wider movement.